Welcome into our News 10 Sports Special. It is Tucker time. I'm lucky enough to be joined by News 10's Tim Stout. And Tim, it is the start of a new era. Yeah, it is, but I've tailgated in this parking lot for 50 years on and off with weather sometimes better than this, sometimes worse than this. It's supposed to be a lot better tomorrow for the game conditions. But if you tailgate at Michigan State through the years, you're used to wind and rain and everything else. But nonetheless, it's Tucker time. And so those who follow Michigan State, Michigan State football are excited. Yeah, all right. It is Tucker time. And let's start. Let's send it now to a piece on the start of his era. New head coach of Michigan State football, Mel Tucker. This Saturday will usher in a new era for Michigan State football. Over eight months after he was hired to replace Mark D'Antonio, Mel Tucker is finally ready to take the field, leading the Spartans. His debut at Spartan Stadium will look unlike any game that we have seen in recent memory. The same global pandemic that delayed the start of the Big Ten season by two months leaves stadiums across the conference empty. The sounds of the game will be all that is left. Only family members will be in the stands, no cheerleaders, no band, not even Sparty. Normal or not, this is what the Spartans have been preparing for, and they believe they are ready to answer the bell. We're relentless competitors and playing complimentary football. You know, offense, defense, and special teams working together. We'll all be pulling in the same direction, you know, playing for this great university and all of our fans. Uh, we're just very excited for this opportunity. Coach Tuck is a physical dude. Like, very physical. If it's one thing we gonna do, we gonna do during practice is hit people. You know, he tells us all the time, if you don't know what to do, just hit somebody. <laughs> we can live with that. When Tucker trots out of the north end zone with the Spartans on Saturday, he will have a tall task ahead of him, replacing a man that won 114 games in his time with the green and white and brought the program to some of the highest of highs in college football. We'll soon find out if Tucker can start his own MSU legacy with a win. And trying to help Mel Tucker through his time at Michigan State will be longtime Michigan State assistant Mike Trussell, who did work underneath Mark D'Antonio for over a decade. He was the defensive coordinator this last year and was one of two coaches retained on the staff uh, by Mel Tucker. But he's different now. He's the safeties coach. We've got some video of him because it's going to be a little bit of a transition, no question, for Mike Trussell, the safeties coach this year for Mel Tucker. They're happy to be together. And Trussell knows all of the returning players of course, from last season's team, obviously. He believes they're handling this coaching transition well. It was hard at first because they love Mark D'Antonio. There's no doubt about it. They love Mark D'Antonio. But um, it, it's been really smooth. I mean, they're, they're all in right now. I don't sense anybody looking backwards at all. I feel like everybody's 100% looking forward and, and believing in what we're doing. Now, Trestle and Tucker have some returning players to work with, but not a ton, actually. Michigan State does not return a lot of starters on either offense or defense this season. But, Tim, they do have a couple playmakers that they can rely on. Well, I'm looking to uh, tomorrow, Elijah Collins. He ran for more than 900 yards last year, and he had very little experience coming in last year when he started. But he made his way through and got some experience. You're going to see him carrying the ball tomorrow. And I'm like you on defense. To me, the playmaker defensively, if that's the right term, Hang it down over there, will ya? Is Antoine Simmons. He's been the kind of the de facto leader of this team in a lot of ways. Every time they ask him to comment, it's Antoine Simmons. So I'm looking for Elijah Collins on offense and Antoine Simmons on defense. Those guys, which gets us to the schedule that they have to play, which is a different schedule unlike any other year. Yeah, of course, they start with Rutgers tomorrow, obviously, in their season opener. But then it gets a little bit tougher. They go to Michigan. They go to Iowa. So they're not back in East Lansing for another three weeks after that when they come back to finally get another home game. So they have a game against Rutgers on paper, probably one of the easier games, right? Yeah, I would hope so. I mean, I saw Rutgers in the stadium last year at Rutgers and it was senior day. Rutgers played hard, lost 27 to nothing, which ended State's five game losing streak. I thought State did just exactly what it had to do to win. Rutgers tomorrow is going to have to be better on offense. 
but the quarterback who played last year's third string now coming in tomorrow, so we'll see what that does for him. And football is not the only topic of sports conversation this week on campus, right? Yeah, unfortunately, Michigan State Athletics, they're projecting a best-case scenario of a $30 million shortfall in their athletic department budget for this season or this school year, and worst-case scenario, maybe $60 million. They had to make some dramatic cuts, including the men's and women's swimming and diving programs. For more on that, here's News 10's Kellen Buddy. Michigan State Athletic Director Bill Beekman says Thursday's decision was one of the toughest he's had to make. He also said it was one that needed to happen. Many tears were shed. Very, very challenging, difficult uh, conversation to have with the young men and women who dedicated, frankly, uh, the majority of their lives to their to their sport. One of the big factors, their facilities. Beekman says they were using the IM West pool for competition. Which is a, uh, you know, a, a smaller than standard pool uh, and, and makes, makes both competition and, and practice uh, very hard and, and really uh, severely limits somebody that's, that's training uh, with the hope of being an Olympic caliber athlete. Beekman says right now there's no plans yet to eliminate any other athletic programs. He plans to honor all current scholarships for those athletes. Reporting in East Lansing, I'm Kellen Buddy, News 10 Sports. Well, there might not be fans allowed at the game. There might not be tailgating, but people are still going to wonder what will the weather be like for the first Michigan State football game tomorrow. We'll have more on that coming up after a short timeout. Now, there might not be fans at Spartan Stadium, but I know I, for one, am at least interested in what the game day forecast is going to be. Might have to bear the, the elements a little bit there tomorrow, but to help us out with that and his forecast, here is Andy Provenzano. Yeah, Seth, it's going to be a typical fall crisp day, sunshine, a little bit of a breeze on the cool side. A shame that generations of Spartan fans won't be in there for the first time, but it's going to be a, a cool day, but a sunny, dry day. We'll start with the high school games, though, first, because obviously our weather is changing as we speak. We've fallen into the 50s now. Gusty winds out of the west bringing colder weather, and I think the game time kickoff temperatures are going to be very close to 49 or 50 for the high school football games, and the winds are not going to quiet down. It's going to be very breezy right on through the game, and temperatures by the end of the evening are already going to be in the low to mid 40s. Now, the Spartan game, that looks a whole lot different compared to that one. It'll be a chilly start. We're going to go down to the low 30s, so if there was any kind of tailgating time, it would be in the upper 30s. Kickoff is right around 44 degrees, and then we'll hit a high of about 47 and down to 40 if you're hanging through East Lansing or wherever you're leaving the game. So a chilly day, but it will be sunny. The breeze might be an issue on the field. It's not huge, but it will be noticeable for the Spartan fans. So not a bad forecast for a kickoff game. It's too bad it wasn't today's weather before the rain. Uh, tell Mel Tucker, if the wind's like this tomorrow, <laughs> make sure you're going toward the tunnel entrance in the fourth quarter. <laughs> I hope our staff and the cameras, they're going toward the tunnel entrance as well. We have a lot, I've done a lot of live shots out here, but <laughs> telling you what, I'm game hard right now. I, this is why you play a bowl game in Florida if you have to. But we got a lot more coming up. We do, we do have a lot more coming up, including a story about one Spartan who was originally going to transfer away from the Michigan State football program, and now he's back and he's becoming a little bit of a leader for the team. We'll have that story coming up after this short timeout. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium. Michigan State's got a couple of players in the offseason who entered the transfer portal, and I would like to add the players from the South that this weather's like this moving forward for the rest of the season. It's going to be a crowded <laughs> transfer portal. But at any rate, it's an issue going into the season, weather or no weather, right? It is, and one of the players that last season had decided to transfer away from the Michigan State football program has actually stuck it out and is back with Michigan State now, turning into a leader for the team. News 10's Kellen Buddy joins us now with that story. A year after deciding to transfer away from Michigan State, running back Connor Hayward re-enters that Spartans offense. He's looking to carve out a major role. Uh, ultimately, my heart was still here, and uh, I felt like I had some unfinished business. Anything they wanted, I was going to do. Hayward has a tough road ahead of him in a loaded backfield that includes Elijah Collins and Anthony Williams, but his leadership has made a mark on the team already. 
he has gone above and beyond to be a leader for that room. I've been over the moon impressed with Connor and the approach he's taken. The kids respect him. The kids love him. They ask him questions. You can tell he's the oldest guy in the room, and, and he's been a great leader for those guys. Running backs coach Will Piegler says they won't just be looking to Collins to make things happen, and that he, Hayward, and Williams all have as good a chance as any to get the most touches. We're going to need everybody, and everybody's really bought into the team setting of kind of a we not me attitude. Hayward says whatever it takes to give the Spartans their best chance to contend in the Big Ten. You know, I'm forever blessed for this opportunity and, you know, I'm going to do whatever I can to, you know, stay here and be a Spartan forever. And Hayward will look to make that big impact when the Spartans kick off against Rutgers at noon on Saturday, where things might be a little different from a Michigan State fan's perspective. News 10's Natalie Kerwin has more on that. Normally on game day, there are thousands of fans tailgating here in this parking lot ahead of Michigan State's next big game. But with the new rules set forth by Michigan State University Police, these fans are going to have to find a new place to celebrate. This is being done in an effort to ensure the health and safety of you know the, the limited number of guests and fans that will be present. MSU police will be supplying extra officers throughout campus on game days. We're going to use this time to educate the public about our ordinances, our regulations, and uh, you know the behavior expectations. Michigan State University Ordinance 21.03 prohibits the possession of open beverages on MSU's campus. This normally doesn't apply on game day, but in the middle of a pandemic, rules are being forced to change. Honestly, it's kind of hard to, to find an alternative right now. Just kind of got to wait till uh, the university lets us do, you know, what we want. Uh, it was up to me. I, I'd let everything go back to normal because I think if anything, we uh, college students should uh, should be building immunity to it, not hiding from it. Fans like Ryan Reifenberg may feel this is unfair, but recent Michigan State graduate Elena Williams feels that the university is taking the right steps. I don't want people to be unsafe out here, you know, to get in COVID or anything like that. So, you know, if they're doing what's best for the school, then, you know, I think that's that's the way to go. Police say they don't want to have to punish anyone for breaking the law, but they'll do what it takes to ensure people are safe all on campus. This is something that's new for us, just like it's new for everybody else. And especially in the state of affairs right now, we, we're all in it together and uh, we're, we're all looking out for the best interest of each other. Police are encouraging fans to stay home and enjoy the game and not come to campus where all parking lots will be closed off. In East Lansing, Natalie Kerwin, News 10 Sports. Now, the lack of game day crowds is forcing campus street sportswear in downtown East Lansing to close. It opened on Grand River Avenue in 2009. Owner Dave Smaby tells tells us that he did not see a viable way to stay open through next fall without fans or student foot traffic coming into the store. He says leaving after 11 years will not be easy, and he thanked MSU fans for all of their support. Now, obviously, everybody's pretty excited about opening day, but maybe no one more than the players. They've talked about this and talked about this. All the players in the Big Ten, we saw protests, we saw letters to the Big Ten and everything else. It's been nearly two months, but for sure, the Michigan State players are anxious to get the Mel Tucker era started. We're preparing for them, and we've been watching a ton of film, whether that be like Ohio State, Minnesota, Rutgers, like we're getting ready physically and mentally and the coaches have been doing a great job of getting us prepared to go and I'm excited for the opportunity to compete on Saturday. Oh, I'm excited to see see um, see how this team is going to develop and grow. I know we've got the pieces. Uh, we've been working our butts off. Now it's just now the time has come to put it all together and show you guys what we've been doing this whole time. <laughs> Now, we mentioned it earlier in the show, but one of the big things that all Michigan State fans are wondering is who will be under center tomorrow for Michigan State. We'll have more on the quarterback competition coming up after the break. With former three-year starter Brian Lewerke pursuing a career in the NFL, it's time for the Michigan State Spartans to find their new man under center. We're going to play who gives us the best chance to, to win. And so, um, you know, we'll just have to see how how this week unfolds. The front runner for the position, redshirt junior Rocky Lombardi, who's made appearances in 16 games during his time as a Spartan. 
But the Spartans have some hungry youngsters in Peyton Thorne and Theo Day. Well, there's been a there's been fierce competition at so many uh, positions, including quarterback. Lombardi knows what it's like to play under the lights on Saturday, but Coach Mel Tucker says there's lots of potential in their QB pipeline. The guys that we have are very capable, uh, and so uh, we're we're very fortunate to have. Uh, multiple quarterbacks that can that we feel like can't get the job done. And Coach Mel Tucker did not say if he would play more than one quarterback on Saturday against Rutgers, but this is the first football game with a new head coach in 13 years. Who knows what Tucker might have up his sleeve? Reporting in East Lansing, Kellen Buddy, News 10 Sports. Michigan State has so many loyal people who support the university through all of these years in athletics and everything else. And among those in the community, I would have to say near the top or at the top is Ralph Shaheen at Shaheen Chevrolet. Shaheen Chevrolet is celebrating its 50 year in business. Shaheen wants to make this a special Tucker time this season and support Michigan State in so many ways. So Ralph and I had a chance to reminisce a little bit and salute both Mel Tucker, Michigan State and Shaheen Chevrolet for our show today. All of us at WILX TV want to congratulate Ralph Shaheen, an iconic business figure in our area. Shaheen Chevrolet is 50 years young and now with Shaheen Cadillac. Ralph, retailing is challenging in America. We know that. What a job Shaheen Chevrolet has done for the community in a variety of ways in mid Michigan. I'm happy to have you here and visit with you. Thanks, Tim. I really appreciate it. You know, it's been a great ride, and I really got to say, it's the team that does it. Um, like MSU football or MSU hockey, basketball. Uh, we have a great team and they're dedicated to providing uh, the ultimate automotive experience for our guests. I mean, through 50 years of what America has been through and now 2020 and all that, to be as successful as Shaheen Chevrolet and now Shaheen Chevrolet Cadillac has been, I can only imagine some of the lows you had to get through as a retailer in the car industry to make it to where you are today. Well, there has been ups and downs, but you know, it seems like the, when the ups were ups, it was great. And when the downs were downs, it wasn't so bad because we have a great community behind us and a great team behind us. And uh, we've been able to grow it and keep it growing. Why did you decide to add Cadillac? Well, it was a niche that needed to be filled. We didn't think the customer, the Lansing market was being served well enough for Cadillac. And we wanted to bring a uh, Shaheen excellence to the brand. And we've done that with our new building and our new facility. And Cadillac's just come out with some great products. I know from my time here that Michigan State University's people are very appreciative of the support Shaheen Chevrolet has given the university through the years. Now I got a new football coach over here, and you wish him well alongside all this. Absolutely. You know, I think Mel Tucker came in at a time when MSU needed him. Uh, he, nobody expected what happened with COVID, but, you know, I think he's just shown his, his excellence. If, if the team is half as good as what he's shown his character to be, it's going to be a great, great season. Ralph, a couple of seconds left. You're proud to be a part to have Shaheen associated with Michigan State. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Michigan State has given so much to this community, and that's what we try to do as well. And so has Shaheen Chevrolet Cadillac, staples in the community, and we're happy, happy to have him help Mel Tucker at Michigan State get started on his first year as the Spartans head football coach. Hey, Tim, you know, sports betting is legal now in the state of Michigan. Nobody trusts with more with their money than you when it comes to Michigan State football. So I got to ask you, you look at their schedule, obviously they're home against Rutgers to start the season, then they're at Michigan, at Iowa. It's a pretty tough schedule. It might have their easiest game, honestly, tomorrow at Spartan Stadium. But what do you think for the for the season for the Spartans? Well, providing they play eight or nine games. I mean, if they play all the games, let's say eight, and then the other game at the end, but to go through eight games, I, I feel a lot better after I saw the quarterback play tomorrow against Rutgers and how they do. But in advance of that, I'm in the three and five, four and four range, something like that. I know uh, one thing. If you're going to tailgate here, those 30 Porta Johns are here yet. <laughs> so you can't tailgate here until they get the Porta Johns over here next season because that's the biggest deterrent to tailgating it. In the police, there's no Porta Johns over there. Three and five, four and four. Oh, I was going to say about the same thing, but people don't trust me with their money. They trust you. But thank you so much for joining yeah. and for It's Tucker Time, our new stand sports special. We hope you guys got a little bit more excited for the Spartans home opener tomorrow against Rutgers and don't go anywhere. 90 minutes of local news starts right now.